Welcome viewers to my mod review of Optifine. I use the multi-cord version so it really helps with world loading. As you can probably see now this is me flying at full speed and I'm getting what it does is increase the rate at which it generates by up to three times if you're using a multi-core processor. Also what it does for me is over double my frames per second which means I go from 200 to over 400 frames so it is rather ridiculous. When I'm recording it doesn't really do that, it only limits it to 60 because that's the programs I use. You might have noticed a lot of flickering as I fly over, this is actually caused by Optifine but you can get rid of it rather easily. You see it will actually stop or at least slow down once the world generation actually has completed so simply pressing escape can stop it from happening because it allows the world to load much faster so you can just concentrate, so the game can concentrate on just playing the game instead of loading and generating new world. Now, although I hate MC Patcher, simply because you can do it yourself if you know what you're doing, simply using MC Patcher to uninstall Optifine and quickly reinstall it in about 10 seconds can often fix all these problems like chunk errors and flashing. In fact, I find that it'll fix it nearly every time. Now, some people do seem confused on which version should they use. I recommend the multi-core version if you have a multi-core processor. Although if you want your Minecraft to look more amazing, say if you're using a great texture pack, then it probably is the better idea to use the version that has the anti-aliasing and anisotropic, anio, I give up, the filtering. Now if you don't care about looks or you don't have a great processor, I definitely recommend next up is the smooth version. Also you should probably use the smooth version if your Minecraft doesn't work when you try the multi-core version. Sometimes things just won't work because of the advanced features, it might just not be compatible with your hardware. That's unfortunate but sometimes it's what you have to do. And if all else fails and it still refuses to run, then only and only then should you use the lowest version, the light version. Sorry, I meant the standard version. The light version is another step down for people who basically their graphics card can't handle all the advanced features and they just want the frames per second boost because that's what's most important to them. It should be noted that Optifine can actually reduce your frames if you mess with the options but make the game look absolutely amazing. That's because it adds a whole heap of new graphic settings, such as turning clouds on and off. I prefer it off because I just don't really like the look of them. Changing the fog. Fog distance, you can actually bring it closer even though your render distance is far away to give a more atmospheric feel. Now the detail menu. What this allows you to do is to set different features at a different setting. As you can see, I could change clouds to fast while all my other settings are on fancy which is useful for people who like the better grass, grass textures but can't actually handle the fancy setting. Or for me who just absolutely hate rain getting in the way, so I can just turn it off completely. Although the sound will still happen so I know it's, the environment is there, it won't actually obstruct my view. Also you can turn off depth fog like I just did so when you go underground you can actually see to the same distance as you would when you're above ground. Next up we have quality settings. These are the things that can actually absolutely kill your frame rate. Turning on MIP map usually doesn't do much but it can make things look rather amazing. Now if you can handle it, if you have the RAM, processor and graphics card, you can turn your settings onto this and turn on far view. I might experience some lag here, even with my computer because I'm recording. But what this will do is double your render distance. So the world is going to render to a huge distance so you can actually see everything. A quick rule of thumb for this setting, what it will do is basically cut your frame rate by nine. So I actually can record here, you can see it might be a tiny bit choppy, but it's still not too bad, but I would never do a series with this much render distance. I might play single player like this though. Animation settings, just another screen for turning off any kind of animations that you want so you can get some higher frame rates. And now we have performance. These settings are less important but still useful. Smooth FPS will depend on your graphics card whether it works, sometimes it will reduce your FPS. Sorry about that viewers, sometimes it will just stop it from fluctuating. 
Now we have smooth input. This can help with people for stuck keys and sound lag. And also load far. This is quite useful. What it will do is that even if your render distance is set to low, it'll actually load the game on far so you can switch incredibly quickly, which is important for people who do do recordings. Chunk update is a setting that can increase how quickly your world will load, but will probably decrease your FPS as a sacrifice. So next up we have dynamic updates, which basically just increases world loading while you're standing still, but will decrease it while you're moving around. And preloaded chunks will stop that loading every time you move 16 blocks and it'll still increase that further so you won't get as many lag spikes, but they will be more significant. And here we have some more settings. You can change the default so you can actually change the size of the screen. Say if you're recording but you can't handle full HD, you could decrease it here. You can also turn weather on and off. Have debug info appear on your screen. Even set the time so it's always daytime, but this will of course only work when you're in creative. And finally the auto save. So the problem with Minecraft is that it constantly saves every two seconds, that's what it defaults to, which can result in a lot of lag. So you can set this to whatever you want, two seconds up to 30 minutes. You just have to ask yourself what's more important, constant lag or having backups of your world as close as possible to when you turned it off, or it crashed. And one of my favourite features, the ability to change your texture pack with a click of the button without actually exiting your world. Well viewers, I hope this helped you choose which Optifine to get, or just helped you increase your frames per second. Stray Mav signing off.